Now we are here in module 49. And so now was where we really start to get into the matrices. So solving equations using matrices. So the first thing we need to discuss is how do you turn a system into a matrix? When a matrix comes from a system of equations, it's called an augmented matrix. Okay, so you see that word here, augmented matrix. In the first topic, they already conform it or transform it into its matrix form. Okay, so I want to explain how they do that and then we'll do that when we get to the next topic. Okay, so what they're doing is they're making sure that it's all set up for um, elimination, right? You have all your x terms first, then your y terms, and then your constants. So if you think of it, these are your x coefficients, your y coefficients, and then your constant. And this little bar you can think of as like the equal sign. Okay, so things do have to be on a certain side of the equation in order for you to put them into the matrix form. And they have to be in a certain order as well. Your x's have to go first, then your y's, then your constant, okay? So, um, let's see what we have here. Um, then they start asking you, Remember that one topic where it was asking you what happened to the equations, right? They're gonna be doing that same thing here, okay? Except instead of saying B1 and B2 and A1 and A2, they're just gonna say row one and row two. And when they when they turn it into a new equation, it becomes a new matrix, okay? So if I take these, notice that it's positive uh, five, negative 10, and negative 45 negative 6, positive 17, and positive 69, okay? They obviously did something to row 1, okay? Notice that row 2 stayed exactly the same. What did they do to row 1? Notice that 5 turned to 1, negative 10 turned to negative 2, and negative 45 turned to negative 9. Now, it looks to me like they divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, and negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9. But they're saying I need to multiply by something. Well, remember, division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what I'm going to type in here is actually 1 over 5. And verify that. What do you get when you do 5 times 1 over 5? you get 1. What do you get when you do negative 10 times 1 over 5? You get the negative 2 and then negative 45 times 1 over 5. Oops, I put the parentheses in the wrong spot. You get the negative 9. So now you have to start using fractions instead of division, okay? Now let's see what else we've got here. So um, for step two, they took this matrix, which was the one where they left off with, right? And they did something to them and they got a new row two, okay? Now, what happened here? It looks like they eliminated the X um, variable. So if I take this, how do I eliminate this X variable? Well, the first thing I'm gonna need is a positive six up here, right? So if I take this whole matrix, okay, so how do we eliminate that? We can multiply the top equation by six, which would give us um, six and negative 12 and negative 36. And then if we add the second row, we would get zero. Here we would get five. And then there we would get 15. So that does seem to work out. But what did we do? We multiplied row one by six, and then we added row two. Now this matrix is just rewritten over here, okay? Um, now they're asking us, what do we do to change row two? So notice what happened to row two. 
This zero stayed zero, five turned into one, 15 turned into three. So it looks like they divided by five again. And how do we write that in here as a multiplication? We use the fraction, right? One fifth. So if I multiply zero times one fifth, it's still zero. If I multiply five times one fifth, it's one. And if I multiply 15 times one fifth, we get three. So those are not too bad. Now let's see what happened here. Now it looks like they're changing the, this one that we left off with, and it's become this. So now notice the difference here. These guys are all the same, but the negative two has turned into a zero. So it looks like they've eliminated the y value here, okay? Remember, the first column is x's, the second column is y's. How do you eliminate a negative two? Well, the only way you can do that if the bottom one were a positive two. So what happens if I multiply this whole row by two? I would get zero, two, and six. And if I add that to the top, I get one, negative two and two is zero, and negative nine and six is negative three. So that's what would go here. And then the bottom is staying exactly the same, so the bottom should have a positive three there still. But what did I multiply row two by? I multiply row two by two. And so that goes with in the box. And then the last thing is for them, notice we have one X, no Y's, equals negative three. Here we have no X's, but one Y equals three. And so they're doing is they're changing the augmented matrix back into equation form, and that row back into equation form. Okay, now we're going to work on what's called the Gauss-Jardin elimination, okay? This is Gauss-Jardin elimination. They just did it for you, okay? But here's what they're doing. The goal is to turn this part here into a one first. Then use that to turn this one here to a zero second. Then go here third and turn it into a one, and then go here fourth to turn it into a zero. Whatever you end up with over here will end up becoming your solutions, okay? But you have to go in order. Turn this into a one, zero, one, zero. Kind of going around like a U, okay? If you don't go in that order, you'll be there all day long changing things and then changing them back and then changing them again and then changing them back and you just end up going in circles. So you have to go in that order and you have to get those particular numbers one, zero, one, zero. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna put this into the augmented matrix. So it's already set up to go. You've got your X's on the left, you've got your Y's on the right, and then you've got your constants on the other side of the equal sign. So here it's going to become negative 5, positive 20, negative 35, negative 6, positive 28, and negative 62. So then look at what they have already. They have the one there for you to remind you that's what your goal is. So how do I turn that into a 1 by multiplying by something? Well, I know I can divide by 5 and get 1. So I know it's going to be a 1 fifth. But notice it went from negative to positive. So I also have to multiply by a negative to change the sign. And then just make sure negative one fifth times negative five is in fact one. Then negative one fifth times 20 happens to be negative four. Negative one fifth times 35 happens to be positive seven. And notice we're not doing anything to row two. So row two stays exactly the way it was. Now, I put this here because I want to see what I left off with, because now we have to transform this some more, okay? So now they want to change row two. So row one is not going to change at all. So I'm going to put my numbers back the way they were. It's row two that's going to change. And what did they do? They eliminated that X value. So how would I eliminate this X value? I would have to multiply the top row 
by a positive 6 so that the positive 6, this would become negative 24 and this would become 42. The, the positive 6 and the negative 6 would cancel each other out. But then negative 24 and 28 would give me a positive 4. And then 42 and negative 62 would give me a negative 20. Okay, and so that's how you fill in the rest of the chart. Now, what are they doing here? They're doing something to row 2. So I'm going to leave the top row exactly the way it was and figure out what they're doing to row 2. Notice that they changed it from 4 to 1 by multiplying by something. Well, really what they did was they divided by 4. So how do we do that as a multiplication? We're going to use a fraction. So 1 fourth of 4 is 1. What is 1 fourth of negative 20? And that is negative 5. And you can type in your calculator if you're not sure. 1 fourth times negative 20. Your calculator will tell you it is negative 5. Now the last step, they're going to change row 1. So row 2, I'm going to keep it exactly the way it was and fill in the box. Row 1 is changing. Notice that now the negative 4 has been eliminated. So how could they do that? They would have had to have multiplied the bottom row by positive 4 so that I get um, 1 positive 4 and then negative 20. 1, I'm sorry, 4 times 0 is 0, isn't it? And when I add them, 1 and 0 is still 1. Negative 4 and positive 4 is 0. But what is 17 and negative 20? And that should be a negative 13. And what did I do? I multiplied row 2 by 4. So final answer, I have 1x equals negative 13. And I have 1y equals negative 5. And so that's how you do it there. They do give you hints along the way on what you're doing. Um, but eventually, you're going to have to do this on your own without the step-by-step -step guidance, okay? So this next topic, and I've only got a couple more topics left. This next topic says writing solutions to three by three systems of linear equations from the augmented matrix. So here they've completed it all out for a three by three and we need to write it the solution. Now the first one I'm gonna do is the bottom one actually, okay? <clears throat> So you've got 1x, which is just x, no y's, no z's, equal to negative 1. For the middle equation, you have no x's, 1y, no z's, equal to 1. And for the bottom equation, you have no x's, no y's, 1z, equal to 0. And so your solution here is going to be negative 1, 1, and 0. Okay? And that's all you get, this bottom, this one here. For the top one, let's see what we get. If I do the top equation, I get 1x, no y's, no z's, equal to 2. For the middle, I get no x's, 1y, no z's, equal to 1. And for the bottom, I get no x's, no y's, no z's equal to 3. Well, if I have nothing on the left-hand side, you need to fill in that spot with a 0. Okay? But this statement right here is a contradiction. 0 does not equal 3. Although the matrix is saying 0 does equal 3. It's telling us that that's what we have. But it's a contradiction. It's not true. Okay, when you get a statement like this that's not true, what that means is that this matrix or this system here has no solution. Okay, now let's go see what the other example is going to tell us. So if I put this in equation form, this is 1x positive 4z equal to 4. This is no x's, 1y plus 3z equal to 3. And this is no x's and no y's, nothing on the left side, 
equal to zero. Now this time, it's not a contradiction, it's a true statement. But when you have a zero equals zero, that means that there's infinitely many solutions. But not just anything is a solution, okay? The solutions fit a certain format. And how do I figure out what that format is? Notice that the variable that I'm missing down here is Z. I'm supposed to be told some information about Z at the bottom. Top one tells me information about X, middle one tells me information about Y, and the bottom one is supposed to tell me information about Z. Since it doesn't tell me anything about Z, I'm going to say let Z be arbitrary. And what that means is let Z be anything you want, any real number whatsoever. That's what makes it the fact that you're going to have infinitely many solutions because Z could be any number from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Okay, so we don't know what Z is and nobody cares. It's just some number that we're going to choose um, and that'll give you a solution. But we want a more general solution, not a specific solution. Okay, so let Z be arbitrary. Then what that means is you're going to take the top equation and since Z is arbitrary, we're going to solve for X in terms of Z. So basically just isolate the X. So this equation becomes X equals 4 minus 4Z. So once I pick a Z value, I would plug it in here and then I'd have an X value. And Y plus 3Z equals 3. Same thing, isolate the y, and so you get the equation y equals 3 minus 3z. And so once I know what x is, once I know what z is, I could figure out what x is and I could figure out what y is. And so how do you write these solutions? Okay, for the x value, I'm just going to write 4 minus 4z. For the y value, I'm going to write 3 minus 3z. And then for the z, I'm just going to put z because that one is random and arbitrary, right? And this is what the solutions look like. So not just anything can be a solution, okay? 1, 0, 0 cannot be the solution because if z is a 0, when you plug that in, you don't get 0 here. And when you plug that in over here, you don't get 1 there, okay? So not everything is a solution. The solutions fit a certain format. And this is that format. So this is the trickiest one to do, um, but you do have to do it in, these, in this uh, module here. So we've got two more um, problems. Well, one, two, two problems here, and then one problem over here. So now they're going to walk us through how to solve a 3 by 3 matrix. Now this one's a little bit more confusing than the 2 by 2 because with the 2 by 2, you could go in um, like a U shape, right? We talked about that. So for a two by two, you would change this to a one first, then a zero, then a one, then a zero, and then you'd have everything, right? For three by three, it's a little bit more complicated. You do change the top one to a one first, but then you have to change these guys to zeros. Then you would change the middle guy to a 1, and then these guys to zeros. And then lastly, you would change the bottom guy to a 1, and then the top two guys to zeros. Okay? So the actually, the game plan, it was the same game plan here, just wasn't mapped out to you that way. The game plan is, is to get the 1 in the column, and then use that 1 to turn everything else into zeros. Then when you move over to the next column you're gonna go on a diagonal and you get this guy to be a one and then use that to turn the rest of the people in the column zeros and so if you think of that as your game plan notice it fits the corner goes into one you use that one to turn the rest of the column into zeros go in a diagonal now this guy becomes a one and you use it to turn the other guys in that column to zeros and then you go in a diagonal this guy turns to one 
and then turn the rest of the guys in the column into zeros, okay? Whatever happens over here, that's just the consequence of these operations, and that will eventually lead you to your solutions, okay? So let's see what we get when we solve this one. This one is a guided problem, so that helps if we're not just shooting in the dark, right? Um, so let's see what they did first. Notice that they changed row one, and they went from a two to a one. We've discussed how you do that. Instead of division, you're multiplying by a half. So half of two is one, half of one is half, half of zero is still zero, and half of five is five halves. Now, now they're gonna give you a new row two. So notice that they eliminated the three. It turned to zero. Well, in order for you to eliminate the three, that means you would have had to have multiplied this row by a negative three, so that the negative three and the positive three would give you zero. But if I multiply this by negative three, I get negative three halves. And if I multiply zero by three, it's still zero. And if I multiply this by three, I get 15 over two. So just verify that the rest of the numbers are correct. So negative three and three is zero. Negative three halves and four, let's see negative three halves oops i didn't put the negative negative three halves and a positive four is in fact five halves um, zero and negative two is negative two and then 15 over two plus 28 is in fact um oh i forgot to multiply by negative 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 zero and negative so that should have been a negative 15 halves. There we go. And now I get the 41 over two. Okay, great. So what did we do? We multiplied the top row by a negative three. Now let's see what we have here. So they changed row two. So what changed? Notice that the five halves turned into one. How do you get a one when you're multiplying fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal, right? So this should be two fifths. And let's verify that everything works out. So zero times two fifths is zero. Five halves times two fifths is one. Negative two times two fifths. Is negative four fifths. And then 41 over 2 times 2 fifths is 41 over 5. So it does work out. Now what are they doing? They're changing row 1 and row 2 in the same matrix. So let's see. To get row 1, notice that this, um, this middle term turned to a 0, right? So they're using this 1 that you just got, and they're going to change these guys into zeros. So how do I eliminate a half? I need a negative one half, right? So negative one half times row two plus row one will give me this row one. Now we're gonna need to eliminate row three. So in order to do that, I'm gonna need a positive two and then you can verify any, everything else. So if I multiply this by positive two, I get zero, positive two, negative eight fifths, and then 82 over five. And if I combine that with these guys, zero, um, where am I? Yeah, zero, zero will be zero, zero and, hmm, oh yeah, two and negative two will be zero, five, negative eight fifths, will be 17 fifths and then negative 47 and 82 over 5 will be negative 153 over 5. Now lastly we're doing row 3. So notice that this changed into a 1. How do you do that? You multiply by the reciprocal. And then 0 times 5 17 is 0. 0 times 5 17 is 0. 17 times 5 17 is 1. And then this fraction times 5 17 is negative 9. Now what are they doing? They're going to use this 1 to change these guys into zeros, eliminate them. 
right? So in order to eliminate a negative, I mean a two fifths, you're gonna need a negative two fifths. <coughs> Excuse me. In order to eliminate a four fifths, negative four fifths, you're going to need a positive four fifths. Okay. But you do have to fill in this information. So let's go ahead and do the first operator and then we'll do the second operator to see what we're gonna get here and here. So if I take row three and I multiply it by negative two fifths, I'm going to get um, zero, zero, and then I'm gonna get negative two fifths. And here, negative nine times negative two fifths, I get 18 over five. Now when I combine these, I'm gonna get one, zero, zero, and then I'm gonna get 10 fifths, which is just two. Right, 10 over five is two. Now when I do it again, this one in green, if I multiply this by four fifths, right, I'm gonna get zero. If I multiply zero by four fifths, I get zero. If I multiply this by four fifths, I get four fifths. And if I multiply negative nine by four fifths, I'm gonna get negative, or just positive four fifths, I'm gonna get negative um, 36 over five. So zero and zero is zero. We're changing row two. So zero and zero is zero. One and zero is one. Negative four fifths and four fifths is zero. And 41 fifths minus 36 fifths is five fifths, which is just one. Five over five is one. And notice the bottom did not change, so this number should not change either. Now notice the equations. One X equals two, one y equals one, and one z equals negative nine. Okay. Now they want us to solve it on our own. Okay. So notice that they've almost got these things done, um, but they're not quite finished. Okay. So let's go ahead and finish them out. Notice that they have the one here. And they have eliminated this one, they have not eliminated that one. And how do we do that? We're gonna need a negative three halves times row one, then we can add row two to get a new row two. So negative three halves times one, negative three halves times zero, times zero, and then negative three halves times one again. And if I put row two underneath this, what do I get here? I get 0, 4, 0, and negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. So I'm going to rewrite my matrix, and I'm only changing row 2. So I get 0, 4, 0, and negative 4. In the bottom, I'm keeping the same. And then the next step is to make the diagonal guy a one. And so to do that, I would have to do one fourth times row two to get the new row two. So that means here, row one is gonna stay the same. Row three is gonna stay the same. One fourth times zero is zero. One fourth times four is one. One fourth times zero is zero. And one fourth times negative four is negative one. So what do we get here? We get one X equals one. One Y equals negative one. And one Z equals five. So our solution is this. Now let's go ahead and see what we get on the other matrix. Okay, so here, let's look at this one. This is a one, this is a zero, but we need to change this one to a zero. Well, in order for me to do that, I'm going to need a positive four. So positive four times row one plus row two to get me my new row two with the zero where it's supposed to go, right? So multiply row one by four. I get four, zero, zero, negative 20. Row two goes right underneath that. And then when I add them together, I get zero, one, zero. I don't know about this, so let me grab my calculator. And I get negative 15 over two. 
So I'm going to rewrite my matrix with that row two. So row one is going to stay the same. Row two is going to change. And row three is going to become this, or stay the same, which was that. Now we gotta use that one to make these guys zero. This one's already good. This is the one I need to eliminate. So how do you eliminate a negative three? You multiply by a positive three. So this row two is gonna get multiplied by a positive three. Then I can add the negative three, and I need to replace this guy with the zero. So the R3 is the one that gets replaced. So let's see. Um, negative 3 times row 2. So that'll be 0. Or not negative 3, just 3. 0, negative 45 over 2. And then row 3, 0, negative 3, 0, 39 over 2. We get 0, 0, 0, negative 45 over 2 plus 39 over 2, and we get negative 3. So let's rewrite our matrix. 1, 0, 0, negative 5, 0, 1, 0, negative 15 over 2, and then 0, 0, 0, negative 3. So let's put that in our equations. We get 1x equals negative 5, 1y equals negative 15 over 2, and then we get nothing equals negative 3. Remember, this is a contradiction. And when you get a contradiction or a false statement, the answer is actually no solution. And so I believe that is the end of this module.